of this moment. For this is a time of mystery, a time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is the haunting hour. The Dark Tower. Perhaps I should have known from the very beginning as the car brought me up the great curving drive. Perhaps I should have seen in that massive pile of gray stone on the Jersey coast near the crashing sea the shape and face of terror. But at that moment, nothing was further from my mind. The recent death of my invalid father had left me alone. And here on the East Coast, far from all associations, I was starting my life again. In my pocketbook was a letter from Dr. Edward Preston, the eminent psychiatrist, confirming my engagement as governess to his seven-year-old son, Bobby. And in my mind were all the thoughts of a young girl, anticipating anything except fear. And so... I found myself at my first interview with Dr. Preston. Well, I think we understand each other, then. And the salary is agreeable. Of course, Dr. Preston. But it seems a great deal for... Please, Miss Carroll. As I explained in my letter, there's good reason for that. A reason that becomes my painful duty to tell you now. Yes? My wife is mad. Oh, how terrible for you. To be a psychiatrist, to be powerless to help my own wife. Is there no hope? No, I'm afraid not. You see, I'm not her first husband. She was married before and had a son, John. He was killed last year in China in a plane crash. Oh. His death was a great shock to my wife. She never recovered. I can understand that. I told you that my father... Yes, of course. Mrs. Preston, however, is still quite active. That's why you must be with Bobby continually. Dr. Preston, you don't mean I mean it. that Bobby must never be left alone with him. Oh. My wife is attended constantly by my housekeeper, Miss Brangley. She's completely trustworthy and has been with my family in this house for years. And I am Bobby's guardian. Exactly. It's no easy job. Miss French, the last governess, just packed up and left without a word. I want to be sure you understand completely before you begin. I appreciate your honesty, Doctor, and I, I... I wish I could tell you how sorry I am for you. Thank you, Miss Carroll. In spite of what you know now, you will stay? Of course, Doctor. You need me. I'll stay. Not only need you, Miss Carroll, but want you. But I'm sure Bobby will agree when he sees what a pretty young governess I've been... You rang, Doctor. Oh, yes, Miss Brandy. This is Miss Carroll, Bobby's new governess. Will you show her to her room, please? Very well, Doctor. Now, if you'll excuse me, Miss Carroll, I'll arrange for your bags to be sent upstairs. And uh, once again, for your understanding, thank you with all my heart. So you're the new governess. <laughs> yes. I hope little Bobby will like... Go. What? 
Get out of here, you little fool, while you still have time. My arm, let's go. Get out. You're not wanted here. Not wanted. <laughs> I should have fled then, with the cold, icy fingers of fear beating a tattoo inside me, as I broke myself out of the grasp of this chill, domineering woman. But instead, my heart went out to the lonely man who had asked for my help. And so I failed to follow Dr. Preston up the great, curving stairway in the vast, echoing hall. Up, up it spirals into a room in the high tower which gave the house its name. This will be your room, Miss Carroll. Bobby's through the connecting door. Oh. Right? Oh, what a magnificent view. <laughs> the view is wonderful. The Atlantic. That's all ocean for 3,000 miles over the horizon. Oh. The sea breaking on the rocks far below may disturb you a little at first, but eventually that rhythm becomes a lullaby. One could sleep to it forever. Listen to it. <laughs> Oh, French windows. And a little balcony, too. Oh. Yes, I wouldn't use this balcony if I were you. You see how low the railing is, and it's a sheer drop to the sea in the rocks. I hope you won't find a use for it, Miss Carroll. No. No, I certainly won't. And with a child, it seems very dangerous to have it. What? Well, here's Bobby. Bobby, come here. Daddy. Hi, Daddy. It's all right, Miss Bradley. How are you, son? Well, look who's here. The new governess. Bobby, this is Mary. Hello, Bobby. How do? Are you Mary Papa? <laughs> no, who's Mary Papa? I know. She's in a book, isn't she, Bobby? She had an umbrella. Yes, and she slid up, up to banisters. Can you slide up to banisters, Mary? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Well, I should think not. Miss Carroll isn't in a book. She's real. But Miss French was real, only she was an angel, and she could fly. Miss French was the governess who left. Oh. And uh, what makes you think, young man, that she could fly? I know she could fly because... Mrs. Preston, what are you doing up here? Joyce! I wanted to see my baby, Edward. No. I just wanted to touch him. No, no, don't let her touch me. She's dead. Mary, don't let her touch me. Now, now Bobby, that's all right. It's only your mummy. No, no, take her away. Bobby, don't you know me? I just wanted to see him. Joyce, you know you shouldn't be up here. Come away. But just to see him, only for a moment. Come away. Edward, I'm a mother. You can't chuck me away from my child. You can't. Joyce. Yes, Edward. Yes. Come away with me now, Joyce. Come away. Yes, Edward. I know I shouldn't have come. I shouldn't have come. Miss Carroll. Oh, oh Miss Bramley, I didn't know you were here. Now will you leave? <laughs> oh, hush, Bobby, it's all right. Of course not. I'm needed here. You're a fool. A blind, stubborn little fool. Maybe I am. But I'm not leaving. You'll leave, all right, sooner or later. But I've done my duty. I warned you. A week in the tower house, and I had settled into a kind of routine. And then one day, as Bobby was having his afternoon nap, I went out into the garden for a breath of air. A visitor and Mrs. Preston were in the summer house. And Mrs. Preston was a different person. She was alive and vibrant and almost gay when she called him. Mary, come over here, dear. Yes, Mrs. Preston? You never guess who this is. Mr. Frank King. Mr. King was John's closest friend in China. Uh, John? Yes. My first son, the one who was... How do you do? Uh, my name's Mary Carroll. How do you do? Forgive me, my dear. For a moment, I... Perfectly natural. You've been wonderful, anyway. You see, Miss Carroll, John and I were... Well, pretty friendly, and I promised myself as soon as I got back to the States, I'd drop in and see his folks. So I checked in at the Continental Hotel and came straight out here. I think that's very nice of you, Mr. King. Oh, I don't know. It seemed like a thing to do. It was a wonderful thing to do. I know very little about how John... about the details. And you've been like a breath of good, pure air. Oh, you've blown away a lot of the cobwebs for me, Mr. King. Really, I feel like a new... 
Edward. Oh, Dr. Preston, this is Young man, I don't know who you are, but you have no business here. My wife isn't well. She's forbidden to have visitors. Miss Carroll will see that you leave. Come, Joyce. But, Edward, this is John Fred. You'll allow me to know what's best for you. Oh, now, look here, sir. You will please leave at once. Are you coming, Joyce? Yes, Edward. I'm coming. That meeting was to have its repercussions. And the first of them was that night. I was sitting in my room in the tower house and the door burst open violently. Oh, Mrs. Preston. Uh, what do you want? You think I'm mad, don't you? He told you I was, didn't he? Oh, Mrs. Preston. Oh, don't answer. I know he did. You don't understand. It isn't I. It's he who is mad. Dr. Preston? Yes. Oh, listen, my dear, and believe me. I need a friend desperately. Do you know how my first husband died? You know I, I... He committed suicide because he believed himself insane. But what does that to do with Dr. Preston? Edward Preston is our best friend. He was also my husband's doctor. Oh, don't you see it? The pattern repeating itself. First he wanted me, so he kicked my husband to his death. His best friend. And now he's driving me in the same direction. Oh, her can I convince you, Mrs. Preston, you're tired and excited now. Wouldn't it be you better? Stubborn little fool. How can I prove it to you? The governess was here before you. Miss French. She told you about her. Oh, yes. She left suddenly. Suddenly. Yes. Very suddenly. She was my only friend. The only one who could have saved me, but... Look, I'll show you. See these windows facing on the sea? Look down. You see those angry breakers dashing against the rocks? Yes. Miss French knew too much. She hadn't been in this house three days before she saw the pattern of the sea. That's why she knew she... You know what, Mrs. Oh, Lord. Didn't you hear it? Oh, he's home. He mustn't find me here. If you won't believe me, if you won't help me, and before it's too late, you must leave this evil place. Miss Carol, Bobby, what are you doing out of there? I heard you and Mommy talking before. I'm afraid of her. She knows the secret, too. What secret? She knows Miss French's little wife. Miss French was here with Daddy, and they were yelling at each other, so I hid away in my room. Then Daddy went away, and I looked in, and Miss French was gone. And the windows were open, just like that. Oh. You're not going to fly away, too, Mary. Mm, no, my darling. When I leave, it will be with you, and not that way. Not... From the beginning, Mary Carroll's position as governess of the small son of Dr. Preston, an eminent psychiatrist, was surrounded with an atmosphere of apprehension and terror. Arriving at Dr. Preston's old tower house, poised on a sheer cliff over the crashing sea, she learned that instead of a governess, she was expected to be a guardian to Bobby. For according to the doctor, Mrs. Preston, Bobby's mother, was mad mad from grief over the death of a soldier son by a former marriage. Mary's apprehension mounts when the housekeeper, Miss Brandley, tells her to leave, to flee this awful house before some unnamed danger overtakes her. 
The pattern of terror became more complex after a visit by Frank King, a friend of Mrs. Preston's dead son. His coming precipitated a strange and violent scene between the doctor and his wife. Now, two frightening questions begin to haunt Mary Carroll. Is Mrs. Preston really mad? And what really happened to the governess she replaced? Bobby says she flew away out the French windows of Mary Carroll's room that overlooks the tumultuous sea. In her room, Mary Carroll ponders these questions. In my room overlooking the sea, high under the eaves of Grim Tower House, I sat with fear running through me like the cold, scurrying feet of some nameless thing. Had Dr. Preston, my employer, murdered the governess before me? Had she watched him all those years ago drive Mrs. Preston's first husband to suicide and returned again to the house to watch him deliberately repeat the pattern with his wife? Was I to believe the stories of a child and a mad woman against the word of an eminent psychiatrist? Was this a house of tragedy only or of macabre and chilling terror? I knew now that I must have help. But where to turn? Dr. Preston himself? Mrs. Preston, a woman who might be mad? Miss Brandley, that cold, hard housekeeper who already hated me as an interloper in her house. Bobby, a seven-year-old child. And then in a flash, I, I knew my only hope. Uh, Mr. King... This is Mary Carroll, the governess at Tower House. I'm in terrible trouble, and I'm, I'm phoning to ask if you'll help me. Carol, I don't know what to say. Oh, please, I, I don't dare talk long. Will you meet me in the summer house as soon as you can? I scarcely know you. Why me? It's not for me. It's for John, your friend. Mrs. Preston's first son who died in China. Will you come for his sake? Well, hello? Are you still there? Yes. What's the matter? There's someone missing on the phone. I, I can't talk anymore. Will you, will you meet me where I ask? no moon, and the night closed around me like a cloak as I raced across the lawn toward the glowing coal of a cigarette in the summer house. Oh, oh, thank heaven you came. Were you expecting me, Miss Carroll? Uh, Dr. Preston. You were expecting someone else. I, well, no, I, yes, uh, that is, he, he's the man I'm in love with. Miss and... Carroll, when you came here, I told you this was a hard job. Now, if you can't live up to the terms of it, We'll have to come to some other arrangement. Oh, no, Doctor. I I'm perfectly satisfied. I, I was in the wrong. I'm glad you're so reasonable. Now, when your young man comes and... I think I hear him now. You'll tell him to go immediately and never come back. Oh. Are we agreed? Yes. All right. You may have a moment with him, but I shall be listening. Hello? Hello there. Oh, my dear. I'm so glad to see you. Kiss me, please kiss me. Well, far be it. Now, say something nice to me quickly, please. Hello, oh, darling. Oh, you're looking lovely. Just hold me close for a moment, dear. Hey, look, what is all this? He's listening, Dr. Preston. I have to talk fast. He's trying to drive his wife mad. What? Uh, darling, I, I I can't tell you why, but I, I can't see you anymore for a while. Mary, I don't understand. Well, will you trust me till I can explain? Oh, I don't know what to say. Oh, don't say anything, darling. What do you want me to do? But the governess here, Miss French. She disappeared. I, I think she was murdered. Please find out for me. Great Scott. Uh, good night, darling, and, and thanks for understanding. But I don't entirely. Listen, Mary, you, you will write. Oh, yes, yes. All right, then, dear. One more kiss for her. Yes. Will you help? What about you, this other governess? Oh, no. I, I can't leave that poor woman and the child. I'm all they've got. I'm with you. Stand by for word for me. Good night, Mary. Good night, darling. Miss Carroll, I uh, couldn't see your young man very well, but his voice sounded uh, rather familiar. Oh, well, I, I don't think so. You've never met him. Perhaps not. And uh, will you write him later and explain? As a matter of fact, that may not be necessary. Why not? Because, Miss Carroll... I've decided to commit my wife to my sanitarium tomorrow. I spent that night and the next day in a fever of impatience, helpless to stop the impending tragedy. 
waiting for that phone call from Frank. Terrified that Dr. Preston might have guessed that I knew his secret. And then, at last, when it was all over, and Dr. Preston and Miss Brandy had left with Mrs. Preston in the car for the sanitarium, the brooding silence of that terrible house was shattered. Hello? Mary? Frank. Frank uh, King. Yes? You were right about that governor. She did disappear. The police are checking out right now. It doesn't matter. What? It's too late. They left 15 minutes ago. They took Mrs. Preston to the insane asylum. Are you alone there? Except for Bobby. Mary, you've got to leave that place. You're in danger. Not anymore. It doesn't matter. Mary, what's wrong? Mary. There's a draft. I saw the front door. Mary, listen to me. Get to your room and lock yourself in. I'm coming right out. Frank, I'm scared. There's someone in the house. Get hold of yourself, Mary. Don't talk. Get to your room and lock yourself in. I'm on my way. Oh. Uh, Who's there? Oh, the light. Where are the lights? Oh, Dr. Press, don't point that gun at... You little idiot. You think you deceived me for a moment? I knew you'd found out. So I'm afraid you must be removed. You, you wouldn't dare. Why not? I listened to you on the phone telling your gallant Mr. King that I'd left the house for the sanitarium. Who knows that I've come back except you? Miss Brandley. Miss Brandley doesn't care for anything but this house and me. My wife is insane. As for the time, I drove slowly, natural under the circumstances. But, but why are you doing all of this? Why? Do you know what it is to love a woman of stone? A woman who could never forget her first husband? Do you know the, the humiliation of loving without being loved? A love I committed murder to gain. Uh, so you did murder him, too? Of course. Oh, it was noble. His best friend, his doctor... The kind words, the gentle suggestions, like water dripping on a stone. The gnawing doubt until he stilled it with a bullet through his brain. Oh, how could you? I would have done anything to possess her. And I did. I married her a year later. I lavished everything on her. Even gave her the child she wanted. And for what? Only to find her love given to a child. But I've had my revenge first. In denying her his love, and now, in destroying her, I mortgaged my life for a woman of stone. And now I loathe her. I despise her. You're mad. Not mad enough to forget what has to be done. The windows, Miss Carroll. A short leap to eternity. Maybe you are the lucky one. Come. Oh, no. Come, no, or I must I shoot you first? No. Come. Please, please, I won't tell, I promise. Too late, too late. The time is running out. There, there, no. that's better. No. Now, now, jump. No, 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 Mary, don't fly away. Oh. Please don't fly away. Bobby. Daddy, don't let her fly away. I want her to stay. Bobby, let go of me. Let go of my leg. Oh, no, oh, no, watch out the balcony. Hunt me, hunt me. Bobby, dear, it, it's all right. It's all right. Mary's with you. Mary. Mary. Open the door. Frank King. Mary, are you all right? Oh. Oh, Frank. Are you all right, Mary? Yes, I'm all right. And Preston? He tried to... And then Bobby came in and... Oh, Frank, it's so terribly fell. Daddy couldn't fly, could he, Mary? Daddy wasn't an angel. No. No, Sonny. He wasn't an angel. Daddy... I'm scared. I want my mommy. I want my mommy. It's over now. The days of terror are over. Of hope begun. Frank is driving us away from Tower House. Down the long, curving drive. And Bobby is sitting in the back seat. Shyly beside his mother. And her eyes are shining down. For a moment, Frank touches my hand. And I have the strength to turn and look for the last time at that massive pile of gray stone. The tower dark against the evening sky. Dark, save for one light. Miss Brandley is alone among her ghosts, keeping vigil over the house she loved so well. 
she's welcome to it. I shall never return to that house again, to that room over the sounding sea, except sometimes in the night. For the mind and memory have no defense against dreams. and stillness. Mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubt and fear. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory in the haunting hour. <laughs> 